The 369 Motor Management Relay is a digital relay that provides protection and monitoring for three-phase motors and their associated mechanical systems. The 369 is contained in a compact plastic housing with the keypad, display, communication port, and indicators on the front panel. A unique feature of the 369 is its ability to learn individual motor parameters and to adapt itself to each application. Values such as motor inrush current, cooling rates, and acceleration time may be used to improve the 369's protective capabilities. The 369 offers optimum motor protection where other relays cannot by using the Flex Curve Custom Overload Curve or one of the 15 standard curves. 369 options may be specified at the time of ordering or can be field upgraded at a later date through the use of passcodes that can be purchased from GE Multilin. The 369 has one RS-232 front port and three RS-485 ports located on the rear with the Modbus RTU protocol supported on all ports. Using the 369 PC software, the front port may be used to configure the relay or download new firmware to the 369's flash memory, eliminating EPROM changes. Alternatively, the relay can be configured and monitored via the front keypad and display. The 10 LED indicators located on the front of the 369 operate as follows. The trip, alarm, AUX1 and AUX2 LEDs illuminate when the associated output has energized. The service LED illuminates if the 369 requires service. The backspin detection LED illuminates when the 369 detects a backspin condition on a stopped motor. The metering LED will illuminate if either the metering or backspin detection option is installed. The remote RTD communication LED is on when at least one remote RTD module is communicating to the 369. And the COM1 and COM2 LEDs illuminate when there is communication activity on the associated port. 369 options include 12 onboard RTDs, a metering package, backspin detection, and the option of the addition of up to four remote RTD modules linked to the 369 via fiber or RS-485. Each remote RTD module can support up to 12 RTDs and optional contact inputs and relay outputs. The RS-232 programming port is intended for connection to a portable PC running the 369 PC software. This diagram clearly shows how to create the 369 order code. There are several points we should note. One analog output is available on the 369 base model. The additional three analog outputs can be obtained by purchasing the metering or backspin options. The 369 is only available in a non-drawout configuration. The control power code high for high range or low for low range must be specified at the time of order. If a feature is not required, a zero must be placed in the order code. All order codes have nine digits. The example order code 369 high R000 would be interpreted as follows. A 369 motor protective relay with high voltage control power and 12 RTD inputs. After the 369 Plus has been wired and control power applied, it can be programmed. Programming can be accomplished with the 12 position keypad and 48 character alphanumeric display. However, it is preferable to download a complete settings file created by the protection engineer using the 369 EnerVista setup software. The following is a description of the operation of the keypad and display. The 369 messages are organized into pages under the main headings, set points, and actual values. The set points key is used to navigate through the page headers of the programmable parameters. The actual values key is used to navigate through the page headers of the measured parameters. The page up and down keys may be used to scroll through page headers for both set points and actual values. Once the required page is found, the line up and line down keys may be used to scroll through the subheadings. The value up and value down keys are used to scroll through variables in the set point programming mode. It will increment and decrement numerical set point values or alter yes or no options. The reset key may be used to reset a trip or latched alarm provided it has been activated by selecting the local reset. The enter key is dual purpose. It is used to enter the subgroups or store altered set point values. The clear key is also dual purpose. It may be used to exit the subgroups or to return an altered set point to its original value before it has been stored. The help key may be pressed at any time for context sensitive help messages such as the set point range. 
The 369 is ordered with either a high range or low range power supply. The high range power supply can operate between 40 to 265 volts AC or 50 to 300 volts DC, while the low range power supply can operate between 20 to 48 volts AC or 20 to 60 volts DC. Transient energy is removed from the relay and conducted to ground via the ground terminal. This terminal must be connected to the cubicle ground bus using a number 10 American gauge wire or a ground braid. The supply is protected via a 3.15 amp slow blow replaceable fuse. Some of the 369 digital inputs have dedicated functions, while the default function of other inputs can be changed to one of the following general functions. Turn on the 369's alarm output. Turn on the 369's trip output. Generate a block. Function as the input to the 369 digital counter. Initiate a waveform capture. Put the 369 into the pre-fault simulation mode. Put the 369 into the fault simulation mode. Put the 369 into the pre-fault to fault simulation mode. In most applications, the spare input should be used to sense starter status by connecting either an auxiliary A or B contact from a breaker or a normally open or normally closed auxiliary contact from a starter. This connection is highly recommended for use on all motors and is essential for proper operation of start inhibits such as starts per hour, time between starts, start inhibit, restart block, and backspin start inhibit. The differential input may be used as a contact input from a separate external 86 differential trip relay. Contact closure will cause the 369 relay to issue a differential trip. This input may be wired to an external speed switch. This allows the 369 to utilize a speed sensing device for locked rotor protection. The access terminal inputs, terminals 57 and 58, must be shorted to gain read-write access via the front panel. When the emergency restart switch is closed, the 369 performs the following actions to allow the motor to be started under an emergency condition. All trip and alarm functions are reset, the thermal capacity used is set to zero, and all protective elements are disabled and the starts per hour count is reduced by one. As this input is intended for an emergency situation, most motor protective elements have been disabled, and as a result, the motor start may result in motor damage. This input can be wired to a normally open push button. When the push button is pressed, the relay will reset as it would when the front panel reset is pressed. When the RTD option is enabled, the 369 can support up to 12 RTD inputs, as can each additional remote RTD module. Stator, bearing, ambient, or other temperature applications can be assigned to the RTD inputs, which are configured to support either 100 ohm platinum, 100 ohm nickel, 120 ohm nickel or 10 ohm copper three wire RTDs. Note that if the RRTD IO option is chosen, each remote RTD module supports an additional six digital inputs and four relay outputs. The optional remote RTD module is designed to be mounted near the motor, eliminating the need for long runs of RTD cabling. Although the module is internally shielded to minimize noise pickup and interference, it should be mounted away from high current conductors or sources of strong magnetic fields. If only one remote RTD module is used, it can be left at the default slave address of 254 and programmed using the 369 software. Otherwise, the remote RTD software will be required to change each additional remote RTD module slave address from the default value of 254 to a unique number. In the standard communication configuration, the 369 comes with three independent two-wire RS-485 ports. In order to enable communications between the 369 and a remote RTD module, the 369's communication port number three is connected to one of the two communication ports on the first remote RTD module. If only one remote RTD module is to be used, then the wiring is complete. If more than one remote RTD module is to be used, each additional module will first need to be temporarily connected to the 369 port and then programmed with a unique slave address using the remote RTD software. Once all remote RTD modules have been programmed, proceed as follows. The second port of the remote RTD module is then connected to one of the ports on the next remote RTD module. This allows for up to four remote RTD modules to be daisy-chained to a 369 relay. 
Phase Current Transformer Wiring The 369 requires a CT for each of the motor's three phases. The phase CT should be chosen such that the motor's full load current rating is no less than 50% of the CT's primary rating. To ensure maximum accuracy and resolution, the ideal CT's primary rating would be equal to or slightly greater than the motor's rated full load current. The 369 limits the maximum CT primary rating to 5000 amps. The 369 will accurately measure current between 0.05 to 20 times the CT's primary current rating. To ensure correct operation of the 369, the CTs must be capable of driving the 369 burden during normal and fault conditions and CT polarity convention. Phase Voltage Input Wiring The 369 has three channels for AC voltage inputs which are only enabled when the metering option, M, is ordered. Each input has an internal isolating transformer. The maximum VT ratio is 240 to 1. The 369 can accept either open delta or Y-connected VTs. The voltage channels are internally connected in a Y, which means that the jumper shown on the delta connection between the phase B input and the VT neutral terminals must be installed. The Backspin Voltage Input The Backspin Detection option enables the 369 to detect a motor freewheeling in reverse in downhole pump applications, enabling timely and safe restarting. The backspin voltage input is only operational if the backspin option has been purchased for the relay. This input allows the 369 to sense whether the motor is spinning after the primary power has been removed. This input must be wired to a separate VT mounted downstream of the breaker or contactor. Ground Current Inputs The 369 has separate 1 and 5 amp inputs for the secondary of a ground CT, in addition to a sensitive high impedance ground fault CT input. The 369 supports both zero-sequence and residual ground fault CT configurations. The zero-sequence connection is preferred owing to its sensitivity and inherent noise immunity. Zero-sequence ground CT placement. The proper placement of a zero-sequence CT to detect ground fault current is shown here. If the CT is placed over a shielded cable, capacitive coupling of phase current into the cable shield during motor starts may be detected as ground current unless the shield wire is also passed through the CT window. It is recommended that twisted pair wire be used for the zero sequence CT configuration. The residual ground CT wiring. The residual ground CT wiring configuration is shown here. Note that only the one or five amp secondary CT input connections can be used. The 369 provides four form C relay outputs, the trip, alarm, AUX1 and AUX2 outputs. Each relay can switch up to 8 amps at either 250 volts AC or 30 volts DC into a resistive load. All four output relays may be programmed for fail-safe or non-fail-safe operation. GE Multilin defines a fail-safe relay as a relay that is normally energized and de-energizes when called upon to operate. It will also de-energize when the 369 plus control power is lost. Relay Assignment and Operation The relay output is assigned within the protection element and can be programmed as latched or unlatched. If programmed as unlatched, once the protective element resets, the output resets. If the assigned relay is programmed as latched, the output will remain latched even after the element resets. The output will remain in the active state until the 369 is manually reset. The trip relay cannot be reset if a timed lockout is in effect. The lockout time will be adhered to regardless of whether or not control power is present. The relay contacts may be reset if motor conditions allow in the following ways. Pressing the reset key on the front faceplate, using the remote reset switch, or via communications. The following is a brief description of each of the relay outputs. The trip relay. The main trip coil of the motor breaker should be connected to the trip relay contacts of the 369. In the case of a motor starter, the trip contacts should be wired such that they are in series with the start and seal in. The alarm relay output. Protection and control elements set this relay output to the activate state when alarm set point levels have been reached prior to motor shutdown. Auxiliary relay number one. Auxiliary relay number one can be configured as latched or unlatched, fail safe or non fail safe. Any trip or alarm condition can be configured to activate this relay. 
This relay output can be used for many different functions. For example, its closure could send a trip signal to an upstream device if the motor starter interrupting rating is less than the maximum fault current. Auxiliary Relay Number 2 The 369 performs self-diagnostics of the hardware circuitry. Auxiliary Relay Number 2 is normally programmed as the self-test relay, which will activate upon a failure of any self-diagnostic test. 